Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. We are talking about, well, today we are talking about the Ampere Maxwell law. Last time we talked about the so-called Durchflutungssatz. We talked about what is this magnetomotive force and so on. And here I've, I have drawn a situation where we, where we can discuss about this. Huh? There's all possible things. So we have a surface. Uh, the surface has an edge, this edge has an orientation, this orientation gives the orientation of the surface. So all the things I've drawn inside here are in a positive direction compared to the surface. And so along the surface there must be somewhere this magnetomotive force. Okay, So we have our magnetomotive force. And I will use I will use uh, the the symbols we are using in in Austria or in German speaking countries. Uh, and this is a V. Hmm? The unit is ampere. We said this is what we have last time already seen. Huh? And well, one part of this magneto uh, motive force is is. The, I call it Durchflutung. Yeah? So the part where the, uh, uh, current is, is passing through the surface. Yeah? So one part is, this, is the, and again call it Durchflutung. Yeah? Maybe flush would be, electric flush. Yeah? I don't know, Durchflutung. Durchflutung. Theta. This is caused by by currents passing through the surface. All right. And now let's think about how we calculate this. So, uh, well, we have this magneto uh, motive force V. And this can be different. This can be different at the edge of the surface. Here might be a different little part of this, of this magneto motive force. Here, another, here, other, here, other, here, other, here, other. And the complete magnetomotive force is the sum of all those little forces on our little parts here. Yeah? So we are summarizing all our little dVs, yeah? all our little forces, which, which are summarized. And this is the complete force at the, and to, to specify, I want to summarize all of them on the whole edge, uh, the whole perimeter. I will make this little circle. Yeah. So this is the magnetomotive force. And one part of this magnetomotive force is the Durchflutung. Yeah. Flush. Theta. Here. And last time, this we had last time also. Yeah. Yeah, this was last time. And last time I said, this is not all. Huh? This is Ampere's law. Huh? This is the law of Ampere. Um, Ampere discovered this. Uh, but then uh, along came Clark Maxwell and said, yeah, but there are other things also. There are other things also. There's not only, there's not only current which might have an influence. There's also the electric flux. Psi here, I've drawn it in with the big fat arrow, the psi, uh, this, this magnetic flux is somehow generated by amounts, the distribution of, of charges somewhere in the area, and well, yeah, it's there. Yeah? So this might also have an influence. And so we have this electric flux. Psi. 
And indeed, it had an influence. It has an influence. Not it had. It has, still has. <laughs> it has an influence. But, you know, it's... <sighs> what is the unit? What is the unit of, of the electric flux? Remember, uh, here, Gauss's law, Gauss's law of electric field. So the unit is equal, equal the, ho the whole, the whole uh, flux must be the contained charges and so on. So the unit is Coulomb. Uh, what unit do we need? Ampere, Coulomb per second. So it's not, it's not the electric flux which has influence. It is only the change rate of the radiative flux. Yeah? Important. Is the change rate. Of the electric. Flux. And this is a deep C. To TT. And this, Coulomb per second, Ampere, I can simply add. Okay? Why, it, why Ampere only discovered this? Ampere, Maxwell. Ampere, Maxwell. Ampere, Maxwell. Ampere, Maxwell. Okay? <laughs> uh, why? It, it, it stayed undiscovered. Yeah? Why? Because... I mean, here there can be hundreds of amperes, yeah? are still technical usable uh, 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 current sizes. And here, I mean, how much Coulomb do we really have? We calculated this. Yeah? There is, I don't know, some micro Coulombs, maybe, yeah? and this is already huge. And, and so, and the, the change rates, then uh, what are those micro Coulombs per second? And, 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 and here are hundreds of ampere. It usually does not influence, yeah? unless we have very, very high change rates. So usually this discharge changes, they are not too high, but if they are really fast, then we are getting into, into the action. Then this is becoming important. Yeah? So this is the difference between electrostatic and electrodynamic. Electrodynamic, electrostatic. Electrodynamic, electrostatic. Hmm. And actually, uh, this is the Ampere-Maxwell law. Hmm. And we said, okay, we also had this, this, this electric voltage. Remember, electric voltage, and there was the electric field strength. And we said the electric field strength is somehow uh, the distributed voltage over a certain amount of line, uh, length. So let's have a look at this. Uh, let's have a look at this border here. So I'm zooming in now, okay? I'm zooming into the edge of the surface. So here's the edge of the surface. Whoop, yeah? And here we might have the magnetic field. Hmm? Here at this point I will draw the magnetic field, something like that. Whoop. Yeah. And the size of the, uh, the, the the sign of the magnetic field is H. Okay? So we have the magnetic field strength symbol H. Yeah. H. And now this must not go in the same direction as, as the, the curve. It can be somehow. Why not? Can simply be somehow. And here we have this little part of our, here we have a DS. Okay. A little part of our, of our edge. This is DS. Huh? And now, this little part, which is appearing here, yeah, of the magnetomotive force, here we have the DS, yeah, here we have DS, uh, DV, 
sorry, yeah, in the S we have dv. So at this little part, infinitesimal small part of my curve, I have an infinitesimal small part of my magnetomotive force. All right. And how to to go from our 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 field strength to the electromotive force? Yeah? We can think that this edge yeah, is partly in this direction. Yeah? So we have this direction. And we have this direction. Yeah? Two components. Yeah? And the one component acting is only the component in direction of the curve. Yeah? Because this curve is here, this direction. Yeah? Yeah? In direction of the curve. This is the part I'm interested in. Yeah? And this multiplied by this small, so h. Yeah? And now how to get this, how to get this noted somehow that we are going into this direction of ds. Yeah? There is a dot product, ds dot. Because actually I can say these are vectors. Yeah? So h has a direction, s has also a direction, this. Yeah? So here we have a direction s. Yeah? And this is the so-called dot product. Which ends up in a vector, but in the in direction of this. In, in German we also call it Inprodukt, yeah, because it's in this direction. So only the part, so this, this vector is somehow put it into cosine, cosine into this direction. Huh? That's this. And actually, what is the result of this? The result is this little part. Hmm? Now look what I've written here. Hmm? So actually, this equals, equals, zack, zack. We have still the sum. And then we have h. In ds. That's. I'm Pierre Maxwell's law. Yeah, look at my shirt. There are many Maxwell's. Last, last equation. Yeah. Change rate, change rate of the of the electric field. Yeah. Electric field density multiplied. This is the current. Yeah. So actually, that's the that's the Flutung. Yeah. So the flush, the electric flush. Uh, this is the current density here. Yeah. Equals. And this is the vortex density it's called. So this is how, how drivey, how drivey this, this, this H field is getting. All right. So this, this is actually the representation of exactly this, yeah, in a different way of writing with university mathematics and so on. And well, that's it. Yeah? And this is ampere. This is meters. So this is ampere per meter yeah? unit. Ampere per meter. Magnetic field strength. Yeah. Now we have a magnetic field strength. We have this magnetomotive force and so on. Ampere makes also. Well. Let's think a little bit more deeper what this implies. Okay. Let's think about different situations. Well, we have, let's say we have a surface looking like this. A little cap. This is the edge of the surface. A little cap. All right. And then we have here a wire passing through. 
Here it appears again, it reappears at the, at the surface. Huh? I hope you can imagine what I try to show. And here we have our eye. And of course, we also have a direction here of our surface. So, what is actually the Durchflutung of this? The Durchflutung. Theta. I call it flush now. Equals I. I think you can manage uh, to follow this. Uh, and now let's make an experiment. Let's make this, this surface make a little bit more bubbly shape. Uh, so actually our surface will be deformed looking like that. Uh, so here the hole in our surface came a little bit Closer, uh, smaller, but we are still going in here. We are still inside there somewhere. We are still coming out somewhere. So what's now? Right now I'm not taking into account, since this is so small, let's forget about this. Let's see the electrostatic way. Yeah? So what is the Durchflutung, the flush in this? Situation. Something changed? No. So the, the whole magnetomotive force is still this eye here. Still consists only of this eye. And now let's make it even a little bit smaller. So let's say our, our surface looking now like that. And there is only a tiny gap at the bottom. Yeah, tiny opening at the bottom, so it's looking like a balloon now. Mm -hmm. And now our line goes in here, stay a little while inside, and it resurfaces somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And now we have still our eye. Now what is our flush? <laughs> here this stays the same. Yeah, we have positive eye. And here we are entering with the same eye. Here's the same eye. Yeah? There's the same eye entering. So this is in the opposite direction, so it's minus eye. So we have in total zero amps. Aha! Now here we already have no, no magnetomotive force at all. Yeah? In, on, the whole, on the whole perimeter the whole edge of this. Huh? Always on the whole edge. Doesn't mean everywhere is zero. This, these little DVs, they can be something, but in some they are zero. And now let's go to the extremes. Let's say our bubble is complete. Whoop. And our, our edge has... is nothing anymore. Just a, a, a bo nothing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shrunken to a single point, so it's nothing. If there is no edge, there cannot be a magnetomotive force. Cannot be. Yeah? And indeed, if we draw this now, go inside, resurfacing somewhere, I, also here, our Flush is I here minus I equals zero amps. This is direct, direct comes out of this Ampere Maxwell law. Huh? Closed hull, huh? closed hull, every current which is going inside must come out. <gasps> we had this already somewhere. Kirchhoff's law, right? Kirchhoff's law and yeah, the node law telling exactly this. This is exactly caused by the Ampere Maxwell law. Kirchhoff's law. Yeah? Node law implied in our in our law here, in our Ampere Maxwell. 
I said when we were talking about the capacitor that this uh, node law, this is not always applicable. For instance, if I am covering only one plate of a plate capacitor, yeah, then there is current going into, but not going out. So how does this fit now? And this is also the reason why, you know, Clark Maxwell was a little bit... Cannot be. Cannot be. And I said, it's about things where you are not storing a considerable amount of, of charges. Then suddenly we had not use, we had not to use uh, the, the node law. Suddenly we had to use the, the, the law of, of the existence of the non-destructiveness of, of electric charges. How does this fit together? Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. We are still having this closed bubble. We are still having this edge. No edge. So we are still having a magnetomotive force zero. Zero. Huh? And then our current is going in and will nowhere come out. Huh? So our flush is minus i. So this would imply that there is a magnetomotive force. But we don't have a magnetomotive force because we have no edge. And if there's no edge, there cannot be a magnetomotive force. So where is now hiding the thing which brings this to zero? And it's hiding exactly here. Because actually, if a current is going in, there must be a Q accumulating inside there. Yeah? So this Q must grow. And whenever there is a Q and a closed surface, the electric flux, which is appearing through the surface, so there is the electric sun, there's the bright electric sun going here, we have an electric flux, and the sum of all these electric fluxes is the contained charge. Huh? Gauss's law for charges. So, if this charge is accumulating in there because there is a current going inside here, if the current is going inside, this charge is accumulating, so this is growing. And this is growing exactly as fast as this current is going into. Yeah? So there must be as many ampere per second as here, uh, as many coulomb per second as here rushing into. So this dV, uh, dP C to dT, the change rate, is exactly I, is exactly I. So we have this minus exactly this. this. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Because everything fits together now. We don't have such suddenly uh, suspicious things where you know, I need the node law, I need the, the other law, and now, and now with this Ampere Maxwell, all those distractions, all those things, they finally fit together and everything bang, comes together and it's fine. Everything is fine. Cool, huh? Ampere Maxwell law. I like it. Third Maxwell's further Maxwell's uh, equations. Uh, next time we are discussing a little bit of the form of magnetic fields. Yeah? How does they look like? This will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.